Hey, my name is Noah Heron, and I am the lead pastor of Way Church in Nashville, Tennessee. And it's my honor to read the verse of the day to you today. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17 says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now, there are six pieces of equipment that are a part of the armor of God. And five out of six of those pieces are defensive pieces of armor. But there's one that's actually offensive, and that is the word of God, the sword of the spirit. And so this is why it's so important that we as followers of Jesus are reading our Bibles on a daily basis. Because without the word of God, we're getting into battles and into fights without a weapon. And that doesn't look good for us. We got to be like Jesus, who when he was tempted in the desert by the devil, he responded by saying it is written. He responded by using the word of God as his weapon. One of the things that's always stood out to me about that encounter between the devil and Jesus in the desert is that the devil knew scripture. Does the devil know scripture better than you? It's a really humbling thought to think about. But when we are in the word of God consistently and the word of God begins to get into us, all of a sudden the reality that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus begins to set in because we can fight, we can go on the offensive, and we can resist the devil. I hope this encourages you. Use the sword of the spirit. Read the word of God today. All right, yeah. Um, hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's uh, devotional. Um, the, my name is Fozzy, Um And today's uh, game is called If You Can Only Bring One Weapon. And so before Jesus said to his disciples, he spoke one seven book. He really is sick and encouraging. He said, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have a work on the world. And this is found in John chapter 16, verse 33. Even though Jesus has won the ultimate victory, he knew there would be a time between his resurrection and return, when his people would still be vulnerable to attack. But Jesus spoke with confidence to encourage his followers. He is both willing and able to overcome anything and everything the world might throw at us. We can withstand any spiritual attack because of who we stand with, Jesus. And it is the army of God. Jesus is truth, Jesus is righteousness, Jesus is peace, and Jesus is salvation, which we wear. He has given us all the protective gear we need with one notable offensive weapon, which is the sword of the spirit. I have a dagger in my The Bible is no me, but it's a God's spirit filled, powerful, living, and active tool for change, both in our hearts, according to Hebrews 4 12, and in any spiritual battles we may face. We can join in on the offensive against the enemy using the spiritual weapon, God's word. The time, the time you are spending in God's word right now is powerful. It is sharpening you and preparing you for whatever happens today, so that after all is said and done, you will stand. Don't be surprised when you face trouble. Just remember that Jesus prepared you for this day and that's giving you all you need to face.
and uh, usually I, I like to engage in prayer time. If anyone has a prayer request, uh, you can comment down in the live. And let's pray for, for one another. Amen. Because as a body of Christ, I mean, I can pray for you. I'll be more than happy to pray for you. But you can also pray for the other person who are to your side. God, today we come before you with our full gratitude and all. We reflect on the powerful and righteous name of Jesus. We thank you for sending your son Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice, to save us from our sins. And may his selfless sight and blood inspire us to live lives of gratitude and prayer and purpose. Lord, the more we seek you, the more we fall in love. We need you, and we want you in our lives. And Lord, we acknowledge that there are areas in our lives that are keeping us from a deeper relationship with you. Please forgive us, Lord, when you fall and change us. We want to go deeper with you. And we pray for you, please, and watch at the end of the screen. Whatever problems are facing, that you will be with them, Lord. And that you will give us peace and sound mind. In Jesus' name, amen. So I, I, so it looks like today we'll be wrapping up our series, um, of the name of God. Um, but first I want to talk a little bit about the helmet of salvation. Now, there are a few things more dangerous than the head injury. That's why Paul tells us in Ephesians 6, 17 to take the helmet of salvation. It's one of Satan's main tactics. He's lying. That's it, right, man. God bless. So if one of Satan's main tactics is lying, he will certainly go for the headshot and try to make us down our salvation. And our salvation is our ultimate security, the eternal purpose to live with God forever. And says, have you ever struggled with the security of your salvation? Every morning you're not done to, you're not even not done enough to keep God's favor of love. I have wonderful news. As disciples, our confidence is not in our ability to perform perfectly, but it is in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Hebrews 10, 10 gives us his assurance because Jesus' body was offered on the cross as a sacrifice once and for all. And the blood of Jesus saves us. As he put on this helmet, ask the Holy Spirit to move your faith from yourself to Christ where it belongs. I love how King David says in Psalm 140 verse 7, O oh God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Our salvation is secure. So put on your helmet with confidence. And if you're taking notes, 
and as an engaging guy to her, some questions you make when you find out it's first. What is God saying to us? Oh, to personally, what is God saying to you? What does this word mean to you? And how can we apply what God is teaching us? And finally, how can we be specific in prayer today? So we again we are in the book of Ephesians chapter six verse seventeen and it says Put on salvation as a helmet and take the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. And Basically, the helmet was used to cover the head. It's still used today in modern warfare. And uh, maybe not any warfare, but sometimes in sports like football or hockey, they wear protective helmets to protect their head from any concussions or any injury to that. And in the same way as Christians, our helmet is our salvation and our confidence in Christ. And great salvation covers us from head to toe. And it's because of Christ's sacrifice of blood on on the cross and our acceptance of the sacrifice that we have salvation. And finally, um, I want to end this devotional time with the sword of the spirit, which is my personal favorite part of the armor of God. And up to this point, each piece of spiritual equipment has been defensive armor. We display a branches and shield of faith to the peace of an observation. However, the last piece gives us an offensive weapon that the enemy can't defend against. And it's, a, it's the most powerful weapon of Christian can wield. And Ephesians 6, 17 tells us to wield the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We've all seen swords. I actually own a couple of swords in my office. They are long, sharp, and sleek. And they're used to stab, thrust, and swipe at an enemy. Interestingly, the sword is also a symbol of power and authority. Our sword, our power and authority is God's word, spoken out of our mouth. Satan came against Jesus through temptations. Each time, Jesus responded by declaring God's word, and his word slides through the devil's tags, combating the lies and offers that the, and Satan made. And the, uh, the author in this devotional, Dr. Steve Robinson, says, <clears throat> I have a friend who once I have a friend who once took his own son camping. The boy had great fun until night time came. The branches were singing in the wind and sticks cracking in the floor and scared him. Then he remembered a Sunday school lesson about the power of scripture. Quietly, the boy slipped his Bible out of his backpack and laid it on his chest. 
I'll bring bees of permanent skin from the book. Well, that's a good gesture. That's uh, how we get the Bible in our hearts. Instead, it's through declaring the truth of Scripture from our hearts and through our mouth. We wield the sword of the Spirit by speaking in faith, just like Jesus did. That's why Hebrews 4 12 says, For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any twin sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit, and judging them, and is in the center of the thoughts and intents of the heart, and other kinds of Agent it is that it exposes the, the sin in our hearts and our innermost desires. We can wield God's word against deceit, lust, pride, and every other sinful element in our path. And that's King David said in Psalm 149, verse 8. Let the high praises of God be in their mouths, and the two-edged sword in their hand. Jesus is called to weapon of spiritual warfare was God's word. I don't know if it sense. We found this in the Egypt. And we must speak the word. <coughs> Build a downtrend or disperse. We will speak the word of God into our lives. And as we continue to engage with God's word, let's, let's think for a moment. Say, so what's God saying to us? What does it mean to? me personally, or what does it mean to you? And how can we apply what God is teaching us today? And finally, how can we be specific in prayer? So once again, if you have your Bible, we say, turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. Verse 17 says, But on salvation as an helmet, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And I mean, sometimes, like, well, for me, I, I think that it was certainly easier to fight physical battles and spiritual battles and the truth is that both that you see. However, if we stand strong in God's word and we are constant in reading God's word and we let God's word penetrate into our hearts and we memorize verses. And you use the word against the enemy's attacks, and we use it to bring the gospel. And we will be fighting like we are back to us Christians. And because the Bible says that we don't have physical enemies in the sense that. You know, we, because God called us to love. However, we do have an enemy, right? And it's that physical and that is spiritual and that we do everything we can to get us down and get us and shut us out from the community and eventually our relationship with God. Oh, the only way to fight the enemy is for God's word. And every day, it's 
Thank you.